We have a different type of uh, paramagnetism in paramagnetic metals such as aluminum uh, and that is due to the fact that the paramagnetism is not due to localized uh, d electrons for example they are due to electrons uh, that are delocalized so we're going to talk about these now so uh, we see that in paramagnetic metals such as aluminum uh, susceptibility is not a function of temperature temperature independent which is pointing to a different uh, origin of paramagnetism uh, the paramagnetism is not due to localized electrons, for example it's not due to localized d electrons etc so these are uh, delocalized so what do we mean by delocalized well uh, we need to talk about uh, energy bands so when we bring uh, free atoms together to make bonds as you can see here the energy levels split and at the equilibrium bonding distance we see that uh, due to symmetric and anti-symmetric overlap of the atomic orbitals we will be getting these energy bands which are getting progressively wider as we go up in energy so the outer uh, shell electrons orbitals uh, will, uh, will form a much wider uh, energy bands whereas the tightly bound electrons that are closer to the nucleus will have a minimum overlap of wave functions so their uh, their bands are quite narrow okay and uh, moreover and there is an important uh, level uh, the Fermi level that is the maximum uh, energy that the electrons can have uh, so this is the highest energy level occupied by electrons at zero Kelvin so this is called the Fermi level and this Fermi level is the same for up and down uh, spins and so we're going to see what happens to the uh, energy levels where these uh, spins are located as we apply a magnetic field so uh, the formation of energy bands is due to symmetric and anti-symmetric combinations of atomic orbitals uh, forming bonding orbitals and anti-bonding orbitals so we should note that as atoms are brought together the overlap of wave functions and the resulting symmetric and anti-symmetric combinations of atomic orbitals this you can think of constructive and destructive interference of waves so you have uh, symmetric and anti-symmetric combinations of atomic orbitals uh, these are basically bonding and anti-bonding orbitals uh, this causes a splitting of discrete energy levels
to energy bands. So this is uh, very important. And second, uh, the tightly bound uh, core electrons have minimum wave function overlap. so that their, narrow, their uh, bands are narrow. So we see that these energy bands get progressively wider as we go up in energy from 1s to 2s, 2p, 3s, and 3p. So uh, there is an important energy level, the Fermi level, the highest energy level occupied by electrons at zero Kelvin is called the Fermi energy and we show it with epsilon sub f and it's the same this level doesn't change depending on the spin it's the same for up and down spins okay so as you can see here in this energy uh, diagram uh, in a paramagnetic metal for up spins and down spins we have the same uh, Fermi level, Fermi energy level. Okay, so what is the effect of applying a magnetic field uh, to these uh, spins? So if we apply a magnetic field uh, applying an external magnetic field H, let's say in the up direction will lower the energy of down spins by a minus mu zero m dot h and increases that of up spins which have down moments uh, by plus mu zero m dot h so we will see that when we apply a magnetic field the energies of down spins are lowered by mu, mu zero m h and up spins are increased by mu zero m h so we see a difference in the uh, lowest uh, energy up spin and down spin electrons as two mu zero m h as you can see in this diagram so what happens uh, when these vacant sites are formed by uh, moving the uh, energies of the uh, electrons by these amounts, we see that only uh, those electrons uh, close to the Fermi level epsilon f have sufficient energy to move into new vacant sites. Which is, uh, which are created by the magnetic field H. So you can see that initially we have the number of up spins and number of down spins the same. So if I call number of up spins uh, and up and number of down spins and down, initially we have an up is equal to an down. Uh, however, when we have this splitting of the uh, energy 
uh, due to the application of the magnetic field, the up spins have a higher energy uh, than down spins, then we see that the number of down spins is greater than the number of up spins, so that we will have here a net moment of zero, here we will have a net positive moment in the direction of the magnetic field. So the electrons that are moving into the newly created vacant sites are those that have sufficient energies that, uh, that are basically close to the Fermi level. So you can see that the Fermi level does not change, but it's the not, we get a non-equilibrium, uh, we get a, a, a difference in the number of upspins and downspins leading to the uh, net magnetic moment of the metal. So once again, these electrons that we're talking about are not localized electrons. They are the electrons that are free to move. Uh, and a good example is aluminum. So this type of paramagnetism is temperature independent. And it is due to uh, the free electrons or delocalized electrons uh, whose energy, uh, energy levels are uh, changing by an applied magnetic field. And it's those electrons that are close to the Fermi level that will move, uh, that will uh, flip their spin from up to down. And uh, we also talked about here uh, the formation of energy bands. When the atoms, free atoms, are brought together, there will be symmetric and anti-symmetric combinations of the wave functions. Symmetric combinations will lead to a high probability of finding the electrons in between the atoms and anti-symmetric combinations will lead to almost no probability of finding electrons between the atoms. So these are called bonding and anti-bonding orbitals. And tightly bound core electrons uh, will have a minimum overlap of wave functions. So the energy bands uh, that form at the equilibrium bonding distance are quite narrow for those electrons, but it's for these uh, electrons that are close to the Fermi level um, that we see a significant overlap in the uh, wave functions and a significant widening of the energy levels. Once again, the highest energy level that the electrons can occupy at zero Kelvin is called the Fermi level. And that is a very important um, parameter here we have to consider. It's the, it's the energy level uh, around which the electrons can move, have sufficient ener energy to move uh, to new vacant sites created by a magnetic field.